Buckle your seatbelt for a trip down memory lane with the local military. I'm in the driver's seat of this 1941 Cadillac staff car, and you're watching Go Island on Shore TV. On today's show, is it a house or a car? Speaking of cars, we'll look at the 1956 Thunderbird. And a village square in Shimanus goes geothermal. All that and much more on Go Island. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Thank you for joining us on Go Island. We've got an action-packed show for you today and we're going to look at some artifacts of the military of years past and look at some of the new equipment they're using today. I might even get to ride in a military convoy vehicle. Now that's going to be cool. But let's start with Ted Leaker. He's the uh, museum director here at Ashton Armories. Um, tell us what we can see because there's, there's all kinds of interesting things here. We have things from uh, prior to the First World War, prior to the Boer War. Uh, we have artifacts that go back to the 1800s, early 1800s. We have First World War, we have Second World War, we have uh, Cold War items, we have Korean War, and we have uh, examples of every NATO deployment that the types of troops that we represent have been on. Where do you source some of this stuff from? I mean, you've got guns, trumpets, old radios. Where does it come from? Most of it is donation, um, and it's been collected over 18 to 20 years. We started off with, with virtually nothing. And then people, when the gun registry came in, when the long gun registry came in, people would bring in their weapons uh, because they didn't want to keep them, they didn't want to go through the registration process. They either donated them to us or they came to us through the police rather than having them destroyed. Uh, we have people who are uh, old vets who are either moving into downsizing and don't have room for the things that they had anymore. Uh, what's this one? This is a Lee Enfield 303, and uh, this is the weapon in Canada that replaced the Ross rifle in the First World War and carried on as the main weapon for the First World War, the Second World War, and the post war until we uh, ad adopted a new rifle in the early 60s. Now, is this like an actual rifle from that era, or is it like a replica? This is an actual rifle from the era. The only thing that's been done to it is that it's been plugged so it's no longer able to shoot. Can I hold it? You certainly may. We've checked it to make sure there's no ammunition in it. So if I was a Canadian soldier in World War I, going over Vimy Ridge, I would have had one of these. That's correct. Wow. Well, I just worry about my aim, that's all. <laughs> well, so what you need to do is hold it really tight into your shoulder, get your cheek right down on it, Yeah. and then your arm underneath, lean into it, fire. The actual uniform from World War One. I. I mean, it's survived the test of time. You know, obviously the uh, the soldier in the uniforms are probably not with us anymore. But uh, you know, just having that in front of you, it, it it gives you a little historic tingle. I find. What do you think about that? Yes. Well, the one of the things we find out is that people were a lot smaller in World War One, and to try and fit into one of those uniforms now, I certainly wouldn't. <laughs> And to look at the equipment that they had and, and the things that they had to go through with that equipment, it really makes you stop and think about, if I had to do that, would I be able to? This is the Queen Victoria insignia here for an 1870 Circa standard issue Canadian sword. I'm wearing the white gloves. Ted's let me touch a piece of history here. More from Ashton Armory later in the show. But first, is it a car? Is it a house? Well, it's Jen Moranitz who's going to find out. Thank you for that story, Jen. And we're going to continue the theme of unique vehicles here at the Ashton Armory. I'm with Sergeant Les Gardner, who's been in the battalion for quite a few years now. Tell us about your history here. Well, I haven't been here as long as these vehicles have been here, James. However, I've been with the, uh, the uh, reserves for 22 years and with the battalion since the year 2000. These vehicles, they've been here longer than I have. As you know, this 1941 Cadillac staff car 
It's actually a replica, but it is a 1941 beautiful car. You'll notice right here is the Jeep ambulance. Um, you can see it's a 1971 GMC. In the back, what makes it an ambulance is it's got stretchers. It's got the capacity to hold stretchers. Injured people in the field, they'd be loaded onto the Jeeps. The Jeeps being a four-wheel drive vehicle would be the easiest maneuverability in the field to get the patient quickly to the medevac or the ambulance or the hospital station, right? Why is it white, that one? That one's white because with a white vehicle, you'd be noticed more, right? This is United Nations, so they're, they're the peacekeepers in the conflict, right? If they have to go into the fight, they've got their machine guns, they've got their armament and all that, but they're generally there to keep the peace. It's almost like waving a white flag, but having a gun at the same time. The Jeep that you see today is so much different than the, uh, the basic Jeep that they had in the military. What do we use today, Hummers? Hummers are American. Yeah. Uh, the ones that we have today, we'll, we'll go check out some of the vehicles that we have. How about that? And when I get to drive? Do you have your 404s? Ah, uh, I don't have my 404s, so we know what that means. Well, that means you're going to have to join the Army and you're going to have to get your 404s and then you're going to be able to drive. Can we do that in 10 minutes? Nope. Yeah. Well, from this 1941 Cadillac to our next story of a 56 Thunderbird, you know what one of those is, eh? Oh, yes. All right, we'll check out this story and we'll uh, keep the theme on cars. So have you ever felt the roar up close of a 56 Thunderbird? Nope. Have you ever uh, been in one of these? No, but uh, I have a feeling we're going to very shortly. What is this we're looking at? Absolutely. Okay, what this is, is this is 11 companies MRT. MRT means mobile repair truck. Basically what it does is when we go out on an exercise or an operation, sometimes vehicles break down. I'm sure you've had your vehicle broken down and you call the tow truck. Well, in essence, this is what our tow trucks look like, right? This vehicle is a four-cylinder. The engine's made by Aveco. However, the actual body of the truck is uh, made in Kelowna. It's made by Western Star. And you know Western Star from the uh, trucks, right? This is a Western Star truck. So it's a, it's a pretty decent vehicle. It's, it is a slow vehicle and it's got its drawbacks. However, for, for its function, right, it's a perfect vehicle because it, it works. We can carry a lot of stuff in it. What's the top speed? 90. Yeah. In the compound of Ashton Armories, and we've got these huge trucks, uh, what are these for? These are our support vehicles. What, what these are, the newest vehicles that we have uh, in the Canadian fleet for, for service support. As you know, 39th Service Battalion supports the rest of uh, 3rd Division, right? Which is British Columbia, essentially. These vehicles carry a lot of stuff, beans, bullets, everything that the soldier needs in the field, we're gonna be the ones carrying them. Especially uh, during disaster assistance or responses like that, it's gonna be chock full of stuff. And so we need big trucks like that. As you see, it's a big vehicle, so it's gonna be used primarily for roads, right? You won't see too, too many of these in the bush, in the field and all that, because it is a huge vehicle, right? and so it's going to make a, a big impact on, on the environment. Now also, these trucks pe uh, carry soldiers, right? People in the back. That's right, yeah. It's a troop-carrying vehicle. You carry more than 20 people uh, in the back with all their equipment. Now, compared to the old trucks that we have, these trucks, excellent. A quick break now, but when we come back, the Shemaina Shopping Centre is cooling its operating costs using geothermal technology. Well, thanks for watching the show today here on location at the Ashton Armory. If you want to get in touch with us and we'll host the show from your location, you can either Facebook or tweet us. I'm James Green, and we'll see you next time. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Men's Wardrobe by DG Brenner & Co. Menswear and Accessories. Hair Services provided by Salon J.